Welcome to the Virtual CPA Success Show for creative agencies, the go-to resource for agency owners looking to scale their business. Join us every week to stay ahead of the curve and position your agency for future success. All right, Jody, I think that was, that was, a, that was a fun episode today. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Uh, business development is always a fun episode. And uh, not, not you know, who, who could ask for uh, anything better than a vice president of a 400-person uh, uh, you know, digital agency, which is great. I think he had, what, 15 yeah, people 15. or 15 or so people on the team and, and was able to run that. And the nice thing about it was that he, he can give – Gorm was able to give us some insights on what it was from a 25-person shop when he first started to, to growing it to a 400-person agency. So it wasn't like he'd been working for large agencies all along and he really has no idea of what a small agency goes through, which, is, uh, which was great. So it was really nice to get some insight from him on how – how he uh, how he works it. Yeah, I mean, well. I agree. There was I was very excited when he started talking about his background because there's questions I always want to ask that I'm not sure people will know the answer to. But I think when it comes to hiring, anyone who has that big of a department and been working in it for that long can really answer some of the questions that our listeners are curious about. And then the other is the growth, like you said, to be able to see a 25 person company grow to a 400 person company, just the amount of change he's experienced. And I thought he did a great job explaining those two areas and answering those questions. So this is this is an episode that if you are a small business owner, this is one you got to listen to because you're going to get a lot of insight about um, BD and where BD needs to go and how it works. And I think he had some really innovative ideas of how he runs his department, which you kind of talked about in the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely an episode to listen to. Great. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode. Uh, today, we're going to talk everybody's favorite topic, BD. And we have someone that's uh, that's somewhat of an expert here. Really excited to talk with Goran from Infinium um, about uh, about um, BD. He is the VP of Business Development. So uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. No problem. And as always, we're joined by Jody, another expert in BD. So uh, welcome to the show, Jody, again. I'm not sure about an expert, but I'm uh, joining the show anyways. <laughs> there we go. So so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background, as well, a little bit about your company. Kind of give us some, what, uh, our listeners a basis of what they're, who they're listening to today. Yeah, sure. So I'm vice president of business development department and part of the management group at Invinum. So we are a digital company, basically. And what we do is we provide um, this software design and development services to our clients. Now, we don't only kind of um, we don't only provide like resources to our clients and we just kind of plug the people in and just tell them like, go fix that or go solve their issues. We also like to partner with our clients and engage from the very start of their product development. So sometimes we can just come in as a consulting partner and just kind of go from different workshops that are based on the ideation of the product, uh, validation, different user researches, um, and then basically just build on top of that until we we move into the development phase. And besides that, we also have a lot of different accompanying uh, services like DevOps, SecOps, uh, QA, etc. Now we're also tapping into AI, uh, as I'm sure a lot Mm -hmm. of other agencies are. Uh, That's kind of the, the buzzword these days. And yeah, basically we are we are a studio that provides all the different software um, solutions or services that that any company could need. Gordon, how, how t- typically how big are your clients that you work with? Well, it it varies really. So when we started, so I, I've been with the company for eleven years now, and I joined when we were twenty people big. Now we are four hundred people. Wow, across. that's great. Yeah, across six uh, locations around the globe. So from New York, London, uh, Croatia, where our headquarters are, Slovenia, Montenegro, uh, Macedonia as well, for example. And basically, when we started out, we were mostly working with smaller companies like startups, primarily in in the U.S. So a lot of our clients in the U.S. were startups. And then Mm -hmm. since we started growing a lot, we wanted to have like more stable clients that have like annual budgets uh, w- with whom we can plan together the roadmap of their product. So that's when we started also working with some banks. We started building uh, mobile um, banking solutions for them. And then also tapped into some other uh, verticals like healthcare, automotive, etc. So today 
we also work with with all different sorts of uh, kind of sizes of, of the companies but i would say that we are primarily focused more on enterprise uh, sized companies for example like philips like signify uh, alps alpine etc uh, we still do work with with some smaller companies still in the us uh, there's a lot of like mid-sized businesses that have like pretty good budgets uh, for for their digital products and uh, they are willing and ready to invest so we don't mind working with uh, those type of companies as well great so i'm curious how many bd people are in your department that you that you um, work with yeah so that's that's a, that's a question that i always need to unpack a bit because like <laughs> if we're talking bd then we probably consider it to be kind of a sales right yeah. Uh, but in our company, we we also have what we call extended biz dev department, right? And uh, the sellers are people uh, that we have in uh, markets that are interesting to us, like uh, New York, London, uh, Zagreb, and Slovenia. Mm -hmm. And we have seven of those. Plus, we have people who we call, like I said, extended biz dev team. And the, those are solution architects, product strategists, because what we do is we like to include them in the sales process. Gotcha. Uh, my kind of idea is that it's very important. And like, from my perspective, like those are the people who actually execute sales. These the people are only there to kind of to, to mix and match uh, mm -hmm. who is a good fit from the client side and our side to kind of to talk, to, to see uh, what the client's goals are or challenges and how we can help them solve it. And I believe, my belief is that that um, salesperson is just there to kind of, to, to, to get the client to like them enough <laughs> so they can talk to someone else who is a real expert or subject matter expert in that specific um, field or technology that the client uh, needs. So we have these solution architects, we have these product strategies who we feel are very important for, for, for that process. And that's what we also consider as our extended business team. So altogether, I would say around 15 uh, people in, in business. Great. Yeah, so the reason I ask is because I've been waiting to ask this question for a long time on the podcast because it's something we get asked all the time. And as someone who has a 15-person team would probably have a pretty good answer to this question. So how do you go about finding and hiring the right BD person? Because this is questions we get all the time from our $2 million, $5 million, $10 million companies that are mm -hmm. trying to find the right BD person. So I'm curious, how have you built such a strong 15-person team and what do you look for when you're hiring? Yeah, so in my team, I mean, uh, all of them have... A lot of years of experience now. Uh, I think the shortest tenured person is, has been with the company for years uh, in, in, in this department, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, but but when we hired them, they weren't as experienced. Obviously, they were either straight from college or they didn't have a lot of experience in the IT. Uh, today, like my perception when 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 hiring a business person is a bit different than it was five or seven years ago. Um, again, a question that, that needs a bit of a unpacking. So <laughs> we feel that, like, I think we can agree that IT is a fairly young industry, right? Uh, sure. I always like to say that, for example, 20th century was the century of oil. A 21st century is going to be the century of IT. So we just stepped into the first quarter of the century. And mm -hmm. we are now talking about AI, which I think is kind of the, the top uh, mm -hmm. And like the next thing that's going to happen is either Skynet uh, comes to life and wipes <laughs> us off of the face of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. Or there's some extraterrestrial technology that we are yet to find out about. But jokes aside, we can agree that that uh, the IT is still fairly a young industry. So mm -hmm. that means that probably the people who worked in IT are also like young if we compare them to, to some like more traditional verticals, right? Mm -hmm. And now, when you when you when you say, okay, what is sales? Uh, you can always kind of compare it with, you know, door to door salesmen who are used to kind of having, or I don't know, someone who is reading off of the script, etc. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think in IT, like I think people are mostly introverts, right? And that's not a criticism. I think that's mm -hmm. just the way it is. Same as sure. yep. generally, like. For example, in hospitality or I know entertainment industry, people are probably mostly um, extroverts, right? Mm -hmm. So, but to be a good salesman, you do need to have that soft skills 
to be able to kind of to have people relate to you or to kind of get to know you for something and to remember you for something because when the client reaches out to you uh, they will you're not the only person or not the only agency that they're talking to they're probably talking to three five ten others right so how do you make them remember you for whatever it is um now you can you can you can say okay i'm gonna bring on some some more technical people who are going to kind of uh, make sure that we say all the right things in, when it comes to expertise uh, technology and things like that but the market these days is very saturated everybody has this knowledge right so what mm -hmm. is it that kind of differentiates you from from the competition uh, and that's where i think like you need to be able to find people with that character with that identity who are able to tell the client what they need to hear at that point uh, to 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 make sure that they remember them for something, that they like them for something, and then when you open those doors, then everything else will kind of fall into place. So I think when hiring a biz dev person these days, you need to have the best of both worlds: someone who is able to talk about you know the expertise or the services or the products that you're selling. So they need to know you know the high level or you know to some degree in in, in some. In, it's to some level of detail, like what they're talking about and what you're mm -hmm. representing, what the company represents. But then they also need to be like charming or and and just know how to say the right thing at the right time and when to push for something, when to kind of back off. And uh, I think that's a treat that uh, IT people don't really have. I, I don't think that they have like these soft skills yet. And and uh, that's that's what I would be looking uh, to get from from a new business person if I was hiring right now. So the, the soft skill is super important. Um, so you're, you're saying you, you would so you would go you would go completely away from the industry knowledge and go with soft skills first. With the, well, with the hope not, necessarily. Not, not, not necessarily, not necessarily, like I would say 50-50, uh, right. I would definitely combine both worlds. Like I want someone who knows what, I don't know, Flutter is, or what's the difference between cross-platform development or mobile development. I want mm -hmm. someone who knows that difference because <laughs> the client will need a mobile app and they will not know um, what's the best way to build it, right? So I want the salesperson to be able to explain what are the differences, uh, how much it can impact like the, the the performance of the app or how much it can impact the, the cost of building it, right? But since that client is also talking to five different vendors, mm -hmm. I want this person also to have these soft skills so they can get them through the door and bring them over to our office where we can kind of... Uh, throw all those different experts at them and, and then close the deal. So, so where, where, where do you find this person? This sounds like a unicorn. <laughs> it is. It is. It's very difficult. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. It's very difficult to, to find that person. Uh, before we did the uh, acquisition of an agency in the U.S. last year, uh, we mm -hmm. were actually hiring another business person. We, we had a team of four people in, in New York uh, before that, okay. and we had uh, one person, we still have, have the guy uh, in business development role, but we wanted to, to have uh, another person. And we were looking for at least, I think, eight months. And we went through a lot of interviews and we just couldn't find the people with, with that skill set. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like you can grow that person. Uh, mm. If you're growing that person, then I would opt for, okay, let's find someone who has, has the right soft skills and enough motivation, ambition, and uh, kind of um, wit to, 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 to learn um, the technicalities and the language. But that takes time because every person in our business development department that we hired, we built them over the years as well. So we never hired a person who was like a, a final product. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think the, the interesting thing about um, BD, and I think I've probably made this joke on this podcast before, but like I think a really good BD person 
is really good at selling and so they can sell themselves in the interview so i can't tell you how many times my clients make the wrong hiring mistake because though <laughs> they go in the interview and this person's awesome at selling and awesome at selling themselves and telling you how great they are and then once they actually start working with you you're like oh wow that's not even close to what what i thought i was getting into so i think um i really like the idea of um of development you know if you have someone that's really good at a certain um a certain part of your business and has the soft skills to try to develop them to be D. Do you have like processes in place or steps in place of what it would take to do that in order to really be successful at it? Or is it something you just kind of like re-engineer every time you try it? <laughs> we definitely re-engineer it every time we try it. I mean, yeah, back when, when I was the only person in business development, then the next few hires were like just, we didn't have a playbook or handbook or anything. Like we were just like, Okay, so here's the deal. Like uh, you now get into communication with this lead. Uh, you tell them this and that. Uh, this is how you prepare the proposal. Uh, now reach out to them again, etc. So we would just kind of uh, play it as as we went. Uh, mm -hmm. but then later on, we started developing different handbooks because every other team that we have in the department that we have in the company has their own handbook, sure. and uh, so we we're kind of obliged to, to, to create the business development handbook as well. So that helps, but still in business development, there are real life situations that no handbook can, can, can write. Right. So yeah. there's always going to be situations where they're going to kind of hit the wall and like, okay, what do I do now? And you just need to, to dedicate yourself to, to spending time with them, to, to joining them and shadowing them on the calls and meetings and just kind of uh, going back and revisiting some discussions and like, hey, uh, if I were you, I would explain this. Look, this is what I wanted to hear uh, in this instance. So maybe you should approach it this way next time, etc. So it's always kind of a work in progress. And, and it still is like um, we, we always kind of play off of each other. Like if we feel like, uh, I don't know, we have a managing director in London who is uh, doing uh, business development primarily. Mm -hmm. So sometimes he would even say, okay, Goran, uh, can you can you join me on this call with the client? I think it would resonate well with them, etc. So it's always kind of, uh, you know, mixing and matching and playing X's and O's uh, to, to put yourself in the best position uh, towards that client. Yeah, so kind of thinking through that, I mean, it, it sounds like it's kind of a cross-functional approach initially where maybe they're they're doing the the day-to-day -day work you're identifying them at the business development side that hey this could be a great potential person uh that could help sell and so at, at a certain point they're doing both and then you then kind of move them to what i guess what, what are they're best at whether it's continuing to do business development or if it's doing uh production work does that sound pretty fair uh you mean like uh, people uh, people that are uh, coming from the business development background that they are kind of moving into production pro uh, stages? No, no, the, the other way around. So, like, let's say let's say that you're you're the only business development mm -hmm. person on the team, and you've got all these production people, and you've noticed that Jamie's great at talking to people, but he's still working on clients. Mm -hmm. So then you invite Jamie into the conversation, and he's helping with the de business development. Then you eventually think, well, Jamie's great. So I'm just going to move him completely to business development, take him off production and then look for the next production person to replace Jamie. Mm -hmm. that, that's kind of what it sounds like you're doing uh, yeah. with your internal team. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We, we do, we do. Except mm -hmm. so those people that we are kind of, that are switching careers, right? Mm -hmm. they, they become solution architects for us. So business yeah. development people who are sellers uh, mm -hmm. who typically work on commission, uh, I mean, salary plus commission, uh, we hire them and then we kind of teach them uh, about the processes of building proposals, contracts, etc. cetera. Yeah. Uh, people who are kind of have that technical knowledge, uh, we get them from, from technical departments, right? So just, yeah. our solution architects, they used to be Android team leads, um, uh, .NET team leads, um, et cetera. So, so yeah, technical directors as well. So yeah, at some point in their careers, they're like, okay, I'm tired of like just reviewing code all the time, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I just want to kind of uh, speak to people a bit more and kind mm -hmm. of get to know the clients and they're, they're quite interested in that. So that's when we kind of say, okay, yeah, uh, we had this guy or, or a gal on, on a call with a client a few times, uh, they're doing great, like uh, 
the client really resonates with them, they are well spoken, etc. So I think it would be a good fit for them to, to switch careers. So that that's how uh, the idea comes uh, comes about, and uh, that's how we do it. Yeah, for mm-hmm. those. Yeah, because because I, I, we find that most business owners are really good at sales. I mean, that's kind of how how they develop their business. They started with it. Um, when you're acquiring a business, like you acquire the uh, the business in the United States, there, um, I assume the owner of that business is probably heavily involved in sales that sales process now. Is that would that be fair to say? Yeah, he is. He is. They are uh, they are a smaller agency of uh, twenty five people, and mm-hmm. they do have uh, two business development people uh, besides him. So one is based in New York, and the other one is based in uh, Chicago. But the owner is still heavily involved in sales as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you ever find out when you acquire a company that the owner just kind of doesn't want to be involved in sales anymore and wants to get rid of that area and then you've got to find a replacement for it? Or is it pretty common that the owner is, is the is a salesperson? I think it's I, I think it's I think it's pretty common. Uh I mean in a company that's 20, 25 people. I mean, when we used to be 20, 25 people, uh, our uh, back then CEO was still involved in sales, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, I think it's very common for for uh, agency of that size uh, that the owner is still involved in sales. And I think that in our particular case, like uh, he cares a lot about the results uh, over the next few years, if you know what I mean. Yep, yep, very right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's very dedicated to to making sure that uh, you know our targets are met and the goals. So, yeah, he cares about it a lot. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I'm what? curious. Uh, let me. I'll, I'll jump in and show. Unless you're, I'm yeah. gonna change topics unless you want to keep going on this one. No, no, keep, no. That's fine. Sure. Okay. Yeah, because I'm curious. We're talking a lot about your growth, and I know this is another topic that comes up a lot with our with our clients. Is you know they're starting. A lot of them start right where you started with that 25 people, and then they they grow. I'm not sure we've ever had one grow to 400 people, but I'm curious for our listeners that are thinking about growing. What are some of the things on the BD side that are going to change as they grow? And then are there certain points where you're like, oh wow, we just hit 100 people. This is this is a trigger point where something has happened, or is it more natural? So I'm just kind of curious about your growth process. Yeah. So our initial idea was we want to be a hundred people company and that's it. And then just kept going. <laughs> uh, but look, the, the way it was going, like um, pre, I would say pre-pandemic, uh, the sales in IT was easy. Like uh, the the deals were falling from the tree on, on top mm-hmm. of us. And I think around pandemic time things started to change a little bit because there started to some sort of a certainty uh, started showing up uh, because nobody knew what the pandemic would bring and now mm-hmm. after pandemic uh, we are now experiencing again um some downtrends in the global economy right mm-hmm. and then with the war in russia etc so there's still some uncertainty ongoing plus i would say that um, the IT market is a bit saturated now. So there's a ton of agencies, uh, which you couldn't say like five to 10 years ago that there was. Mm-hmm. Plus, I think that a lot of cards have been dealt by now. So a lot of businesses that are looking to either do a digital transformation of their products or companies that are looking to kind of uh, hire external agencies to help them with their uh, IT products, etc., everybody pretty much already has their vendor now, right? So uh, if you want to kind of get new clients, there will always be work. Don't get me wrong. I think there will always be work, but it's difficult to to to, to find it now. Mm-hmm. So now also our growth is slowing down a bit. But mm-hmm. during those years when we had a pretty rapid growth from, I don't know, 2013 to 2013, 2021 mm-hmm. uh, things were like very hectic and the biggest change changes that we needed to implement was processes and we had a lot of pushback from the people internally because they started feeling like okay now we're becoming a corporation 
We don't want that. <laughs> we want to, you know, go to lunch together. We don't want to, we want to have a flexible this, flexible that. I mean, you still get have that, guys, but we need to have some processes because if you want to grow, if you have like a three or five year plan ahead of you, strategic plan for, for your growth or either in terms of like uh, the, the company uh, count or, or the revenue or whatever kind of growth that you want to achieve, you need to have processes because processes allow you to measure things in the company. And that's how we started. We started measuring things. Okay, so uh, I mean, I mean, I believe every business uh, is, is, is uh, tracking their margins, uh, their, their sure. profit losses, uh, things like that. But mm -hmm. like things like, okay, how many deals did we have last year? Okay, is that more or less than the year before? Okay, where do those deals or leads come from? Okay, so why is this source like um, reducing how is the quality of our leads um, okay why is this going up or down so you you need to have that data to be able to understand what's going on with your business but also outside in the world like and then you can make decisions based off of that and that will allow you to grow so processes are is processes are, are something that that uh, we started introducing a lot and even though we hate uh, adding a lot of new processes, I think there's like a baseline that, that you must have uh, in order to, to, to keep track of your uh, strategy moving forward. Great. No, yeah, I definitely think that's that's what we've seen as well. And again, we haven't we haven't had the same growth you've had, but I think as we've as we've grown and as we've introduced more people into BD and other departments, that processes are are, are really key. Um, so, so I wanted to uh, move on to our fun topic here. So we're at, we're at time where we get asked ask the fun topic. So earlier you mentioned Skynet and aliens. So uh, two of my two of my favorite topics. But I'm gonna so I'm gonna ask both you guys, and I this I know this question's fun for Jody because I've talked had these conversations with them before. Like, what is the one either can conspiracy or weird thing that you kind of believe in or you really like researching and finding out more about so um it could be anything from bigfoot to aliens to ai is going to take over whatever whatever it is so um so goran let's start with you since you brought up the skynet aliens i think you've probably thought about this before so let's uh let's start with you well the alien aliens definitely i want to know I would like to know if uh, if if there was a, a crash in Roswell back in sixties. I want to know yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I think I'm the same thing. I think aliens is definitely something I truly believe in. It's hard for me to believe that there's nothing out there in as big as the you know the the universe is and beyond. I mean, the aliens would be great. It'd be nice to know how many aliens are actually. That we've actually met if we have you know are they in our life like are they in our, yeah are they are they kind of in our form are they a different form you know is it more of a yeah. you know an insect form you know how, you know what, what 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 exactly you know is an alien and and, and uh you know have we actually truly met one or encountered them be super fascinated to know yeah i think the alien um kind of like the ai has been really going the last five years i think the alien stuff has also like been going really fast the last five last five years and like to me it's always been really interesting but some of the stuff i've been listening and reading lately has just like blown my mind like stuff i can't even like comprehend like oh wait you think that's they're really from the future and that they're have this technology and they're trying to protect us to make sure we actually create this technology like there's all these like really weird alien theories out there that have like blown my mind lately so I'm, i think we're all on the exact same page here is that we're all interested in, in aliens and maybe we'll have to do a second podcast just on on alien someday so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun for me at least <laughs> yeah. Same. awesome so yeah i appreciate you guys answering that that weird question but um let, let's get to the to the final thoughts here again i think we've really hit on some big topics that um i haven't been able to ask a lot of our guests because of the growth you've had and because mm -hmm. of the size you are that we were able to really hit on some topics but i definitely want to hear your final thoughts for our listeners when they're when they're thinking about dbd what should they be thinking about well, <clears throat> I think that like if you are doing business development or or any kind of sales, uh, you need to build your own identity. So yeah. you need to have something that somebody will remember you for. And like for example, I have a lot of hobbies. I like uh, I play a lot of sports. I follow sports. Uh, I collect watches. Uh, I I have a rock band, cover band. So. Yeah. I, I can kind of tap into a lot of subjects with people and just kind of see what their kind of uh, 
where, 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 when their ears are kind of opening up. Mm -hmm. and, and I think everybody, and that's what I'm telling also uh, people in my team, like build your own brand per se. Right. Because like, if you sound like, uh, I don't know, no offense, but insurance company, like whether mm -hmm. you are, uh, we can provide you this and that. <laughs> nobody's going to kind of resonate with that they're just gonna like yeah whatever you and hundreds of others uh, mm -hmm. but if you have something interesting to say to either uh, disrupt what they're thinking or just to get that connection with them that's that that will make sure that that you stay on their radar and sales is as we know a long game especially if you are doing a lot of outbound and just kind of networking etc so it will pay off eventually, but you just need that thing that kind of separates you from someone else and build your own identity, build your own brand and, and, and just start with that. Yeah. I love the idea there. Cause you, I mean, I mean what, what you're saying is you're, you're saying, you know, Hey, you've got to have somebody that can read the room, you know, somebody that that's just not going to give a sales pitch because nobody wants to hear a sales pitch. You know, that's kind of the, that, that, that way of doing things, in my opinion, is dead. Um, you, you've got to have somebody that's willing to listen, which is really key to that, and and really get on the same page as, as the, the person that you're you're across from. You know, finding out what their interests are. You know, having it more of a conversation than than a true sale. You know, and in the end, you you know you're, you're going to find out a lot about that person. Hopefully, uh, you may or may not sell that person, which is okay. You know, that that's not not a not a negative thing. Um, but, you know, you're going to learn a lot. And it's going to really kind of help you, you know, get to that next level. And uh, what, what I did like about the way that you structured your, your, your business development team is that you've got that technical person that can jump in and really kind of help with the, you know, and get in the weeds and really kind of help the client guide the client. But then also you've got the kind of the appointment set of the person that's out front learning and, and, and grabbing that right person, making sure they're a qualified person and a, a, a good fit before they, before they come in and, and kind of, or, so they don't waste the time of that technical person. Technical person is super valuable. You don't want, want to do that. So exactly. I like the way that you've got a team approach um, in your sales. I, I guarantee that's a, a big reason why uh, you're so successful in the way, you, way you've actually built your, your uh, department. Love it. Love it a lot. And, and I'm kind of curious. I wonder how many folks out there have really thought about that because I know a lot of owners are, are that are kind of both, you know, they, they can be that they're that person that's out there and they're actually finding the right people, but then they're also the person that's doing the technical stuff. I wonder if the owner, cause you know, you hear a lot of owners say, you know, Hey, I just don't like the sales thing. I wonder if they don't like the prospect inside of it. I wonder if it's, or maybe it's it, it, cause I, I can't believe they don't like the technical side cause that's what they built their business on. So I wonder if it's, you know, Hey, that, the owner needs to go and find, you know, appointment setters, find people that can mm -hmm. actually do that, but still be part of the closing process mm. and be part of that. I, I guarantee you they still enjoy um, working with people. You know, that, that's kind of what an owner does, right? An owner sells, an owner sells what they really believe in. I think that really helps out. So I think connecting the two like you've done, I think is, a, is brilliant and uh, kudos to you for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, like you said, I, I think what the the issue that uh, owners have is once they start growing business and companies they just don't have enough time to do the sales properly anymore mm -hmm. and yep. that means uh wearing multiple hats and you only get that luxury to get a solution architect to get a product strategist to get uh, this person that person into the sales process once you kind of start growing beyond um some benchmark that, that you said sure. yeah mm -hmm. uh so so yeah that, that that that's what i would say it's it's difficult in the beginning but after when you figure it out when you kind of okay mm -hmm. now we have that leverage to to have a person that doesn't need to be billable 100 percent of their time or 80 percent of the time we can have them 50 percent just doing kind of these uh sales calls uh, or or workshops uh, that that will then lead to a better closure, I would say, better conversion. Yeah, love it. <clears throat> yeah, I think the interesting thing there is is 
as you grow, it's important as an owner to realize how many hats you're actually wearing. Because you might think you're just wearing a PD and a sales hat, but as you grow and as you get bigger, you're like, okay, what are the things I actually do? And let's list out how much time I'm spending on all of this and what do I really enjoy doing? Maybe it's just this one part of it and that's a full job now that we're at 100 people and now those other parts of my job I was doing, I can give to two other people or one other person because those really are another job. So I think as you're, when you're small, you know, you're wearing those two hats and it's easy to group things but as you get big it's actually like you're maybe wearing 10 hats you know you never know until you actually look at the process and so i i think that's that's great knowledge and also what you said about um about being able to have conversations you know i had someone very early in my career tell me that to be a good salesperson you really have mm -hmm. to be almost like a renaissance man like you don't have to know everything but you'd be able to have any conversation right like you can be in any room and whatever they're talking about you can at least listen and contribute to that conversation so the people aren't like you know that they know you're listening to them and enjoying the, that part of the conversation so i think that can tell you're really good at that and i am curious what is your what is your band name i have to know before we uh, end, end this podcast so the band name is ace ventura there you ace go ventura. Oh, i love it <laughs> <laughs> so, so you said you're a cover band so what kind of music do you cover with a band name like ace ventura rock rock rock, rock music oh, I mean, perfect. Awesome. yeah ace ventura mm -hmm. is, was one of my favorite characters growing up uh, mm -hmm. Jim Carrey is one of my favorite actors of all time. And, uh, I don't know that was just like a random, random name that we, that we decided on. Uh, well, yeah, we do, I we do it, a, yeah. rock music. Uh, we cover, uh, Bon Jovi, Aerosmith, Queen, uh, and also some newer stuff as well. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, well, where, where, can we find, where can we find you about where can we find the music part? I'm, I'm interested in that. So, <laughs> are, you, are you on? A, are you in anything where we can actually? Go no, I it? mean, you can find some some uh, clips on on our YouTube channel, uh, Ace Ventura mm -hmm. Band. So we have a few a few clips of some songs and uh, one full concert as well. So oh, wow. yeah. Oh wow. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to download that. I'll, <laughs> I'll find it on uh, YouTube somewhere. And then, love, how do we find out? How, how do we find more about you? If uh, you know, for those that are interested in reaching out to you, asking questions, that's what well. You can uh, you can either reach out uh, via the company Infinum mm -hmm. com, yep, and or my my uh, private uh, Facebook Instagram channels, <laughs> 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 or my email, right? Goranet com. So. Sounds great. Really well, yeah, definitely. Thanks for joining. And I know um, one of my favorite things to do when I when I work is I'll have a YouTube with a, a live concert playing so I can listen to the whole music. So now, I, now I've added one to that list. So I appreciate you giving <laughs> that insight as well. So thanks both you guys for joining the show. I think it was a great episode. Yeah, thanks, Gordon. Thanks for having me. Enjoy this podcast? Visit our website, summitcpa.net, to get more tips and strategy for achieving business success. We're here to be a resource in this ever-changing industry. <laughs>